Hey y'all. So when we left off, if you recall in the previous video, we had just pulled this engine out of this motorcycle. So now we're going to tear this engine apart so we can see why, if you recall, the issue was that there was coolant leaking into the oil. So what we need to do now is get all of these pieces off. And I think I'm going to start with the hoses. So there's a couple of hoses that go around here and this thermostat housing. We're going to get all of these hoses off. We'll get them labeled and, uh, and put where they need to be so I don't lose track of them. I'm going to get you set up and we'll go through that. I know I said previously that we were going to take these hoses off first, but because I have it on this dolly, it was sitting a little bit funky because of this downspout here in the oil cooler. And I don't really want to accidentally break this off. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take this oil cooler off, which includes this hose that goes around to the oil pump. So I'll get you set up and I'll show you how to do that. I've just got, even though the oil's drained, I do believe there's going to be a little bit of oil dripping out of this uh, oil filter. So I've just got, you know, an already oily shirt down here. I don't expect it to be a gushing spout of oil or anything. And I've already loosened this. So we're just going to take this off, this oil filter. And I think we'll go ahead and set this aside if it looks good enough. Now we're going to take the actual oil cooler off. So we've got the filter off. And this oil cooler is held on by this kind of through bolt here. And this happens to be a 30 millimeter. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that on there. I'll try to get this thing off. And just be prepared because there's a washer behind this. So this is the this is the bolt that holds that on there and don't lose this washer. On the back of this oil cooler, you can see there's also an o-ring that sits on the back of this oil cooler. Don't lose this o-ring. So now that we got the oil cooler off, we've still got this hose that comes up here the water pump and you can kind of see there's a clamp right here so I'm just going to disconnect this hose at the water pump and then we'll store this all together so that clamp is a little bit bent it'll be replaced but uh, so here's the oil cooler with the hose connected. And I'm going to get this cleaned off before I store it with anything else in the bag. And uh, we'll get to taking the rest of the hoses off. You can see the engine's kind of sitting on this kickstand. You know, and it's kind of, it's not sitting very level here. Um, it's pretty much all the pressure is on this kickstand and on this switch. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to leave the kickstand connected here. But I'm going to take out this bolt and this bolt. And these just happen to be two through bolts. You can see on the other side here, this one goes through. And the other one goes through from here down to here. And then both of these engine mount pieces will come off along with the kickstand. So I'm going to get you set up over here. So these two were a bit of an oddball. Take that off of there. I need to take this and this off, these through bolts. This one's a 14 on this side and the other side. This one is a 17 on this side and a 14 on the other side. So I've got the 14. that together set it aside now let's see if we can get this other side off so right here 
just inside here between the frame, I think there is a, a dowel pin. So I'm gonna grab my little hammer and we'll see if we can get that off of there. Still don't know where my rubber hammer is, but we'll use this handy nylon hammer. And that seemed to be exactly the problem. You can see that there are these dowels that go inside here. So I'm gonna have to lift this up a little bit and tap this piece off. Starting to slip off there. There we are. Kickstand, engine mount, off. There's a couple of things I can take off of here that are some, uh, what I would call pretty low hanging fruit. These two vacuum lines that don't really go to anything, they should just pull off like so. Okay. We've got those off. I'll bag these up. I'll get them put in the bin with everything else. And I think what I'm going to do, my next plan is going to be this thermostat housing. You can kind of see it's held on by two bolts. There's one on this side. And there's one on this side. And then it has this hose, which is already disconnected. And then it has another, you know, slightly larger hose that goes down here to the water pump. So I think I'm going to take this water pump. No, I'll disconnect these two hoses here. And I'll take this off as one piece. And then I'll take this, this other cover off you know, with the hose intact also. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead, this is a coolant temperature sensor. I'm just gonna go ahead and unplug this. It's just the same pinch and pull, and it has the, the rubber gasket inside, so don't lose that. And we should be fairly close to getting all of these wires off of here. I'll leave these hanging for now and explain what they are. As we go, we'll clear this out so we have more room to see. And I'll get you set up and we'll get on those. I'm gonna kinda go from here under the assumption that you guys don't really care to see me, you know, unscrewing hose clamps and stuff anymore. So I'll just tell you I'm gonna do it and then I'll do it off camera. In this case, I've got both of these hoses off that run up here. So we are free to go ahead and start taking these two housings off of the engine itself. Going to just take these bolts out. I'll get you set up and I'll show you. It's uh, not super exciting, but I do want to have you see it happen. These housing bolts, all of, all four of them, there's two here and two here, they are all standard 10 millimeter. So I'm just going to make sure I'm going the right way here. And I'm just going to unscrew these real quick. Okay. We've got the two housing bolts for the thermostat housing. This might take a little tap to get it off of there. In this case, it doesn't. Now, you notice there is some gasket material on here, but there is also a rubber gasket here that sits inside of here, so don't lose that. And we'll put all these back together. I'm sorry if you couldn't see that rubber gasket. It's right here. Don't lose that like I just did. I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to package these together. I'm going to put them in the bin. I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm going to package these all together because they're both water hoses. They both go to this side of the engine. I'm getting a lot of this gunk out of here. But I'm going to go ahead and take these two out too. Just another two bolts. This should come off about the same really nothing to it. There is also, if you can see, a rubber gasket that goes to this one. So don't lose that. I'll package this in with the rest of the things we just took off and get it all in the bin together. I think we're ready now to take this wiring harness off. There's several places where it connects here. The first place I want to talk about here is this. This red with the two yellow wires on it that goes around to the right side of the engine. 
Inside this housing is the crankshaft sensor or the pulse generator. That's what these two yellow wires with the red connector go to. This is a simple pinch connector. It comes apart. So that's part of that housing. There is also this connector here that goes here and it's a speedo sensor, I believe. Speedometer sensor. Since it's connected to this wiring harness, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it connected. No reason to disconnect it because I'm going to be taking this out anyway. There's a cable here, if you can see this, that goes here to the back of the starter. This is the negative battery cable. Please do ignore what I said about it being the positive. This is the negative. So we'll get this taken off. The positive actually hooks here to the top of the starter. And there's a little rubber cover right here that has, I believe this is an oil pressure sensor. I could be wrong, but we are not going to disconnect this either as it's part of this wiring loom. We're just gonna take this out and leave this all connected. And lastly, there's a green wire this green wire right here and this wire tracks around to the left side of the engine and goes all the way up underneath it's right here you can see it it goes way back in there and it's just a push on plug and this is the neutral sensor if you can see that plug back there the green wire you can just pull this wire out very carefully in fact, I really don't want to mess this up, so I'm going to grab a pair of pliers and get that out of there. I didn't want to pull this wire too hard and uh, take it out of the connector or tear it out of the connector, so I've just got a pair of pliers. I'm just going to reach back here very gently, and this pulls just straight off. It's a single connection. That is the neutral safety switch. So we'll go about taking these, all these 10 millimeter bolts off. We'll package them all up together. We'll throw the starter in with the, but I'm gonna take this off, take these bolts off, and then this wiring loom will be out of the way also. I couldn't find uh, a wrench big enough to get this oil sensor off of here. This is a one inch. If you don't have a one inch, you can obviously just use an adjustable wrench. And that's the sensor out. Like I said, I'm just going to leave it attached to the loom. Ones for the starter, I believe, are a little bit longer. Yeah. So we'll want to make sure we keep those with the starter. Right here. Ones for the starter and the negative battery cable. And then there are the ones that go to the Speedo. They're short, one short, actually. Both of them are short. These go to the speedometer sensor. And this is the speedometer sensor. It's a Hall effect sensor. So there's a wheel that spins down there. And this is just kind of counting how many times that it's passing over this sensor. Now that we've got all the bolts off, this starter, there is an O-ring. There's two, the two bolts that hold the starter on, on the other end of the starter where it enters into the engine compartment. There's an O-ring in there, so when we pull this starter out, I want to make sure we capture that O-ring also. It took a little bit of wiggling to get it out, but there's the starter. I'm sorry, let me get that here, the starter. And you can see the O-ring. You don't want to lose this. Just to be safe, I will probably replace this when I put the engine back together. But there it is, starter out. The next thing we want to take out, another electrical piece, another Hall effect sensor, just like the speedometer, is on the front of the engine. So I've turned the engine around. There is a single 10 millimeter nut holding this on and what this is the camshaft sensor we're going to take it out just like we do all the other things okay 
nipple bolt. Wiggle the sensor out, and there you go. It's just another Hall Effect sensor. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the bag with the other parts we took off the other side of the engine. And we're also going to get to the top of here, which I'll show you in a second. I should have probably taken these off first, but they're last in this case. These are the spark coils. So there's one per cylinder. They just pull out. These are also known as stick coils. They're individual coils. There's one per spark plug. They all just kind of pop out of there. And you can see I've got all four of them. I'm just going to bag these up like everything else. I'm going to start taking these covers off. And this one is the one where the problem started, where we saw it happening. This is the right hand side engine cover and it's got this little polished cover inside the cover. And what this is, is a timing cover. You can undo this and I don't need to undo it. You don't have to undo it to take this cover off. But I will take it off just so you can see what's under here. And by the way, this is a 17 millimeter. And I'm going to get in there for a second. I'm going to show you what the timing wheel looks like. I'm going to try to get up there a little closer. If you look down here, that is the cam sensor or the pulse generator as they call it. And it is reading every time one of these teeth on this wheel passes over it. It's another Hall effect sensor, so it's just reading that passing. They don't touch, but that is what is connected to this wire right here. So at this point, we're ready just to take this cover off. And you'll be able to see uh, in here the clutch mechanism. This is the clutch cable, where the clutch cable connects when you pull the clutch. And uh, I'll get you set up and we'll do that. It's all 10 millimeter bolts. I'm just going to loosen all these bolts. Back with the eight. Got them all out. You know exactly what I'm going to do with them. Since I only took this off, so you could see what was going on inside there. I'm just gonna go ahead and loosely put this back on just so I don't lose it. And if I had a rubber hammer, I would use it. Obviously I don't, so we're gonna use this again. So just take this off. The gasket is ripped, but there we are. There's the inside of the clutch housing, clutch cover. You can see a better close-up here of the Hall Effect sensor. We'll get up here real quick and you'll see this is the clutch basket. Get these out of the way. And this is the timing wheel. And you're going to want to pay special attention to this later when we're ready to do the timing on this. However, there is, if you look very closely, I don't know if I can focus in on that. There's a timing mark right here. So we'll be utilizing that. If you're going to do any work on the top of the engine, you really need to make sure that this timing mark is set. And for that, you need this cover on. Uh, in this case, I'm tearing the whole engine apart, so I'm going to end up doing that when we put it back together, so I'm not concerned about it right now. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take the clutch out. So we'll get the, this is the clutch basket. We're gonna take the clutch plates. On this bike, there are five. All of these have a spring behind them. They're a 10 millimeter. So I'm just gonna get these off of here real quick. We've got all the springs and the bolts. You know where they're going. But before I do that, we'll go ahead and pull these clutch plates out. And they may not all come out at once. 
but we definitely want to keep these kind of in the order that they come in and be aware that there's a bearing that sits in here don't lose that it's loose it's not pressed in so it can fall out and there is the pull rod or push rod whichever way you want to look at it that sits in this bearing we want to keep those together and you can see that I still have some clutch plates in here and I'm gonna go ahead and get a screwdriver and pull those out this one which was on the side of that and you can actually see this is a little bit burned also and that, so that's the last of the clutch plate set here's the entire clutch plate set so I'm gonna go ahead and package these together with the springs and I'll go ahead and get a set of clutch plates and uh, pressure plates ordered I've turned the engine around we're going to take this cover off now this is the cover that houses the stator and where the starter gears are so we're gonna get this off this is also eight millimeter Whoa. from the magnet real quick there we go here is the stator and this is magnetized when this spins around this it creates electrical voltage to run the bike so it's not running off your battery this is charging your battery this is running the spark it's doing everything while the bike is running and anyway stator this is the starting gear it's just got a pin and it should just come out like so so we're going to put all of these together. And behind here, this is the starting clutch. So I don't know if you can see this gear. You can spin it this way, but you should not be able to spin it the other way. So I don't know how well you can see it, but this is the top of the engine. This is the valve cover. And we're going to just go ahead and take this off. It has three 10 millimeter bolts on it so we'll take this off and when we do take it off there's a rubber gasket that goes all the way around here so you want to be gentle and try not to break that gasket because it is not cheap to replace each one of these bolts if you noticed I pried this piece out of there this is a, a seal that seals oil from getting out of these bolts so each each one of these bolts has one And when you're ready to pull this off, it should just come off, hopefully, just like that. And you can see inside of here is the rubber gasket, and this little piece that goes down, it goes all the way around the outside of this. So make sure you take good care of that. That is an expensive gasket. The next thing I'm going to take off this engine is this piece. Now this is... This is an automatic chain tensioner that keeps the cam chain here tensioned uh, for, you know, a road bike, this is fine. If you were going to race this thing and you really know what you're doing, you could get a manual one that you tension the cam chain yourself. But for my purposes, this is good enough. This is a standard. This is the one it comes with. I'm going to just take this off. There's no need to take this uh, nut out right here. But these are a hex bit. You can see that, and it is a number five hex bit. And they have brass washers, copper washers, whatever that is, for each one. So don't lose those. And then this piece just pulls out. I'm just going to package this thing and I'm gonna put it away. So I've turned the engine around again. We're going to go ahead and pull the water pump off. These two bolts are holding the water pump halves together, but these two 8 millimeter bolts are holding the water pump to the engine. So we're just going to undo those. If you notice, they're different lengths. So keep track of which one goes where. The longer one went to the bottom, the shorter one went to the top. And we'll put those exactly where 
you know where they're going. And then this water pump just pulls out. And if you look on the back, there's a notched piece right here. And there's a notch on the crank or part of the crankshaft back there. Oh, by the way, don't lose this O-ring. Otherwise, you'll have an oil leak down there too. So I know this water pump is good. I don't need to take it apart. I'm going to go ahead and package this thing up with the two bolts. And we'll move on to something else. The next thing we're going to take off is the cam holder. There's several bolts. They're all 10 millimeter bolts, but you can see them. They're, there's a lot of them on here. And the thing we need to be careful about this is uh, we need to loosen these little by little. And you can see there's an order. If you look down here, this one has a 1, and then there's a 2. And then if you come over across in diagonal, 3, 4, 5, 6. I know you can all count, but I just want you to be aware that these are all numbered all the way up to 20, I believe. Yeah, there's 20 of these bolts. There's number 20 right here. We need, or maybe this one. We need to loosen these little by little because what will happen is this is just a piece of aluminum and it's holding these cams down and there are they're under spring tension. If you look in here, there are lobes on the cams. I know most of you know how this works. But if the lobe is pointing down at the valve, there's going to be tension on here. So we need to loosen this in a way where it's not going to buckle or crack. So we'll do a little by little in order. So I'll get you set up and we'll do that. Once we get these loosened off enough, then we can kind of zip them off with the power tool. But don't use a power tool and take these out one by one because you will inevitably crack this aluminum holder. So I got my trusty 10 millimeter, and you can see I found the runaway ratchet. So we're going to use that to undo these in order, little by little. I probably won't uh, film the entire thing, or if I do, I'll speed it up. We'll see what happens. So I've got number one here. We're going to just loosen it up a little bit. And we'll go to two, loosen it a little bit, three. We've loosened all of those off, and we're just going to keep doing that. So we'll loosen them off like half a turn at a time. And some of these you might find are already pretty loose because they're not under tension. So this is the top chain guide it sits up here. Make sure you keep the two bolts with it. And this is loose enough now that we're just going to go ahead and we've got all of these loose. Now there is one thing that I do want to show you. Inside these spark plug holes right here, the bolts on either side of those all have this brass washer so don't lose those and keep track of where they go they these ones with the brass washers you can see this one right here they go where the spark plug holes are we got all the bolts out I've got them put away and uh, I was telling you earlier this is the uh, side of the exhaust cam this is what the Hall Effect sensor that we took off down here is reading. We'll see that in greater detail later, but got all the bolts off, so we should be able to wiggle this thing off now. Hopefully. Let's see if I can just uh, put a little pry right here. So you want to be very careful with this piece because if you look at the underside of it, 
these are the bearing surfaces. If you can see these bearing surfaces, you don't want to scratch these, you don't want to mess these up because that is what your camshaft right here, these journals, they ride in these bearing surfaces and you don't want to have these scratched all. So I'm going to package this up too. And another thing to notice is that inside here where the spark plug holes are, there are O-rings. So don't lose those.